Oh. My. God. SDS just dropped endgame cards in the middle of July. Not only that, but they made them free. Welcome back, guys, to another Mizawa ASMR video. Glad to have you nerds back. Today, we are going over the newest Team Affinity program, Team Affinity 3. So, SDS dropped cards for every single team of one of their all-stars from this year. Okay, starting off, we have Cedric Mullins. Alright, let's take a look. So, he has 100. He's really good contact. Pretty good power. Then things start to taper off a little bit for fielding. Hitting stats, fantastic. However... This fielding looks a little suspect to me. Uh, only 50 arm and 50 accuracy. You're going to need a little bit more from somebody. If you want to play them in either center or right, this might be like an okay left fielder. Um, I personally wouldn't be using this card. Uh, just, just not for me. Yeah, just doesn't look the greatest. Has good speed be an okay left fielder, but most likely just a bench bat at best. Okay, now this is actually like a really, really, really good card. Got the Raphael Devers All-Star card. So, the one thing that I like the most here is his righty splits. That 112 and 125 power versus righties. Oh my god. Now, this card is going to be absolutely insane down the line. Like, we are going to see some good third baseman cards, but this one is going to be up there. This can definitely make the case for best third baseman currently, for sure. Now, arm strength is great. Uh, fielding fielding's good enough there, I'm going to be honest. You don't need fantastic stats. As long as you have a really, really good arm at third, you'll be okay. Yeah, um, Devers you could definitely use. The only thing I don't like there is his lefty stats. Uh, that contact and power just suspect. Now this card, this card is in my lineup. I absolutely wreck the ball with Aaron Judge. So uh, that power, 103 power versus righties, and then 124 versus lefties, then almost 90 power, not 90 power, but contact, versus righties, and then 113 contact versus lefties. This card is absolutely insane. I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't think this card is going to be coming out of my lineup. Now, that 90 arm strength and 99 accuracy, like, oh my god, absolutely fantastic. The only thing I don't like is the 60 speed. If you guys noticed, uh, Devers had 63 speed. I, I don't think that there is any way on this planet that Devers is faster than Judge. Um, that being said, Judge is the perfect right fielder. Uh, he's not fast enough to be in center, but the absolute perfect right fielder. Like Teosco Hernandez, um, he's good for lefties, uh, not the, obviously not the greatest for righties. 79 power, don't like that. I like my cards to at least have 80 versus both sides. Yeah, 80 on both sides. So, uh, not the greatest. His defense, also not the greatest. Uh, that being said, this is definitely like a bench bat that you might bring in as a lefty specialist. And Mike Zunino. This Zunino card is really, really interesting. So, with the 45 p contact uh, versus righties, but the 125 power versus both hand in this like oh my god this catcher card is definitely top tier uh, the only problem is, is that there's so many good outfielders out there right now that i don't think you can really justify putting him behind the plate we could easily have kyle schwarber back there as well yeah kyle schwarber might be a better option um I'll have to see how we do with both swings, but Zunino would probably just be a bench bat as well at best. 
uh, definitely could be starting for you if you hit well enough with him, but for most people, this is going to be a bench bat. Okay, so that was the AL East. Okay, now the NL East. The NL East packs are absolutely insane. First off, we have the best pitching card that we're probably going to see this season. Look at this, 108 stamina, 119 hits per nine, 115 Ks per nine, 97 walks per nine, 99 home runs per nine, 116 pitching clutch, and then really, really good control on almost all of his pitches. Like, look at that. Look at those control. 99 control on the fastball, 97 on the slider, 97 control on a on a 92 mile per hour slider. It's absolutely insane. But not only that, but when you get him up to parallel five, you get him up to super fractor, that hits per nine is going to be nearly maxed out. One away from being maxed out. I, you, you cannot get better than this. This card is going to be the best one you're going to be seeing all season. Not only that, but look at these hitting stats. Like, for a pitcher, like, these are really, really good stats for a pitcher not named Shohei Otani. Like, this is, like, a, an okay, like, bronze batting card. Like, I'm sure there are actual batter cards that are worse than DeGrom out there right now. So, uh, yeah, this DeGrom card, absolutely insane. Not quite Otani when it comes to the batting side, but still really, really good. Uh, Trey Turner, pretty good, um... I can't really justify using him at short. Uh, the only problem with him is his arm strength isn't the greatest. Um, if I were to use him, I'd put him at second. Uh, otherwise, typical Trey Turner card, except a lot more power. Uh, really good speed and stealing. Definitely good to have on your bench, even if just for a pinch runner. Ozzy Albies. Ozzy Albies is also a really, really interesting card. Um, He's always been super good against lefties. He hits better from the right side, so uh, definitely good switch hitter to have. Um, you could definitely just leave him in your lineup, but uh, personally, I just don't think he even makes the bench. JT Real Muto. I don't like this card. Um, if you're going to use a catcher from Team Affinity 3, you're going to go soon, you know. Real Muto has okay contact, but that 70 power versus the lefties just does not do it for me. Um, he has good speed, though, which is really unusual for a catcher, but uh, I just... Real Muto doesn't even make the bench for me. Okay, Trevor Rogers. So Trevor Rogers has not the greatest pitch mix. Um, just because of that, I don't think he's... He does not crack my rotation. Yeah, not even close. Um, his very okay control, which I don't like... And then pitch break. He's really good break, but his speed, pitch mix, and control just lacking. I cannot justify using Trevor Rogers. Okay. Okay, on to the AL Central. Okay. Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez has m really, really good power versus righties. Um, that power versus lefties, however, just doesn't sit well with me. A uh, really, really good utility player. Um, has a lot of different secondary positions. Uh, his defense leaves a lot to be lacking, though. The only place you could really put him would be second or first. But um, unfortunately, that power stat versus lefties, there are just too many better cards out there that I can't really justify using Jose Ramirez. Uh, Carlos Rodon. Okay, now this is a really interesting card. I really, really like his pitch mix. Um, I really like the uh, speed differential as well. You have three different timing windows there. Uh, that's really, really good. Um, really good control on the fastball and slider, which I, which I love. Uh, I feel like every viable card needs to have a good slider, so... Uh, when you mix that with the 96 break, 90, like one control, I think it was, this card 
could definitely be one of the like last two spots in the rotation. Um, but I have a feeling that once we start to see like the finest cards come out, we might see him fall out of the lineup. So this is definitely like a fringe, fringe rotation guy for me. Okay, Salvador Perez. I forgot about this card. Salvador Perez, fantastic card. Honestly, this is a great card. Um, honestly, it might get the edge over Zunino just because he has a lot better contact versus righties. Um, obviously, doesn't have maxed out power, but the power is high enough to where it shouldn't really matter. Uh, the Salvador Perez card is really, really good. Has good enough defense to put behind the plate as well. Um, if you don't like Zunino, Perez is definitely the catcher for this, for this uh, team affinity. Okay, Nelson Cruz, bench bat, nothing else. Defense is not good enough to. He's too slow, and his defense isn't good enough to put in the outfield. You can't put him in left or right, really, because he's just not fast enough. Uh, that being said, his batting stats are really, really good, so it's hard to leave him out of the lineup. However, um, Nelson Cruz guard, bench bat, nothing more. Okay, Gregory Soto. Um, Gregory Soto is the only Detroit All-Star this year, so he's kind of stiff-armed to get to, into getting a card. Uh, he has good speed, but his control leaves a lot. Uh, it's, his control is severely lacking. So um, you can't really use him, unfortunately. Uh, there are just too many better reliever cards out there. Gregory Soto just doesn't make the bullpen. Okay, so that was the AL Central. Going into the NL Central, the NL Central is really weird. There are a lot of reliever cards. Okay, Craig Kimbrell. He has really, really, really good stats. However, he only has three pitches. Two of them are fastballs, the other is a curve. Uh, that pitch mix is not good enough. Kimbrell will not be in my bullpen. And personally, I would not recommend him. It's just, yeah, the pitch mix just really scares me. You're just not gonna, it's it's not good, not, not good at all, honestly. All right, so on to Josh Hader. This Josh Hader card, fantastic. I love this Hader card. This Hader card will be in my bullpen once I get him. Uh, that I like, he has a cider, which is really nice. Um, just a tad bit slower than the changeup, which is good. That fastball is fast enough. It'll hit like 98 on the top end, so that's good. That slider has 92 control, 97 control on the fastball. And then 99 break on the two-seamer. Not great control, but with pinpoint, you should be able to dot it up anyways. And it's like another sinker, really. This Josh Hader card is really good, and I can see most bullpens having him. Okay, Nick Castellanos. This card has insane batting stats. Um, fielding stats, okay. You can definitely get away with putting him at first, first or left. Uh, this Castellanos card will be good for first and left field, but I don't think that uh, putting him in right will be the greatest idea because he does not have a good arm, unfortunately. So Castellanos, good first baseman or left fielder, a potentially good bench bat. Alex Reyes. So Alex Reyes throws absolute heat, has an amazing pitch mix, and has absolutely fantastic break. Unfortunately, look at this control. Um, 87 on the fastball, 92 on the slider. I'd love to see more control on the fastball. Uh, Reyes will make my bullpen for now just because of the pitch mix and the, uh, the speed differentials. However, once we start seeing some better cards come out, I can see him easily falling out of my bullpen. Okay, now Adam Frazier. Adam Frazier is a super utility contact hitter. So um, unless you like the contact hitters, Adam Frazier really isn't going to be the best card. Fantastic defensively, uh, a great second baseman, really the perfect second baseman. Unfortunately, that power versus righties, I don't like. Especially since he's a left-handed batter, 
so he should be better against righties. Um, I don't like that 54 power at all. So this Adam Frazier will not be making my lineups and or bench, and I imagine that it won't be making many other people's as well. Okay, now on to the West. Now the AL West. Matt Olson card, fantastic. An amazing first baseman card. Um, that absolutely fantastic power. Really good splits against both handedness. Um, his fielding is perfect stats for first baseman. You don't need great arm over at first. And because of that arm, even though he has a right fielder secondary, I will you can't put him in right. He does not have the arm you need for right field. That plus 33 speed. Matt Olson, fantastic first baseman. He could definitely start in most lineups. Okay, now Adolis Garcia. This card is fantastic. This was the first card I got. Um, 120, 110 plus power versus both handedness. Um, the only thing is defense. I don't like that arm for center or right. Really, really, really good left fielder, though. Definitely could put in left field. Um, he has good, good enough speed to play center, but that arm just not good enough for center. So definitely a really good left field and bench bat. Jared Walsh. Jared Walsh has really good power. Uh, the contact versus lefties, though, I don't like at all. That being said... The left field and right field position, um, secondary, you cannot use him there. You really can't. But uh, what's really funny here is that he has the relief pitcher secondary. Uh, I wish we could see his pitch mix. However, it doesn't appear that you can really do anything. Uh, Jared Walsh, bench bat as a righty specialist, but there are already so many other cards that can do that, so... If you like his swing, definitely a bench bat. Otherwise, probably doesn't make your lineup. Okay, Michael Brantley, good contact hitter. That power leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, that defense is also not really good enough for center or right. Maybe left. But um, overall, not a great card. That power plus the defense there. I don't see Brantley making either my bench or just my lineup, period. Right, now, you say Kikuchi. Uh, yeah. He had really, really good potential. Unfortunately, the velocity seems to be lacking a bit. Uh, that cutter and the four-seamer. Definitely really good pitch mix there, but I would like to see a little bit more heat on the fastball, unfortunately. He has really good control of his off-speed, though, which is nice. You love to see that. But unfortunately, I don't see, I don't see him making my rotation just because I like people who throw a little bit harder. All right, and now on to the last division here, the NL West. Okay, this Kevin Gossman card, absolutely fantastic. Look at this card, man. The four seamer, enough speed to where you can throw it and blow people by especially when you combine it with all of the other pitches here. Uh, that slider and sp that slider, splitter, change-up, curveball, off-speed mix is absolutely dangerous because they are all off-speed that have different motions. It's not like he has two curveballs. That splitter and change-up can be really hard to differentiate. Uh, that slider should be really good. Uh, doesn't have the greatest control of the curveball, but the four-seamer and the splitter-slider combo are going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, this card definitely in my rotation now. However, I could see him uh, weaseling his way out once better cards come out. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, really good utility. Interesting as a, a relief pitcher secondary, just like Jared Walsh. We can't see his pitch mix. Uh, or his pitching stats, for that matter. Um, really good second baseman card. I don't like the lefty power splits there, but he is a left-handed batter, so that makes sense. But um, I don't see Cronenworth making my lineup or my bench. Uh, Escobar, Eduardo Escobar. The switch-hitting third baseman with 
an absolute plethora of secondary positions. He can play everything else except for center field and catcher, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, really good arm, uh, so perfect for third or shortstop even. Um, I just don't know how I feel about putting him in right, so I'd say either third, short, or left with him. Uh, but that switch hitting with really good splits on both sides of the plate. Eduardo Escobar is definitely going to be tried out. I'm going to try him in my lineup. So, uh, sorry, Jordan Groshans, but there's a new shortstop in town. Okay, now Chris Taylor. I love this card. Fantastic card. Uh, good enough arm. I'd say it's okay enough to put in right. I prefer him in left or at second, but uh, Chris Taylor, super utility. Good stats versus both handedness. I will be having. I'll try him out, but um, I don't see this card staying in most people's lineups for a good time. For a long time, I mean. Okay, now for the last card of the night, we have Herman Marquez. Okay. Um, I used his 42 card a little bit. I feel like a lot of people see him pretty well, so. Unfortunately, I don't know what it is. People just see him very well. He has okay batting stats, which is unusual for a pitcher. Uh, he has really good velo. Uh, the only problem is his control on some of his off speed, the curve and change up. While not as bad as some of the other pitchers, not the greatest. Uh, what really scares me, though, is that four seamer control. I want my uh, pitcher to have really good control over their four seamer. He has really good control for that sinker, but um, I like being able to just dot a good four-seamer. So Herman Marquez won't be in my rotation. However, a lot of people could definitely use him successfully. All right. Well, that will bring us to the end of this video. Uh, I hope you nerds enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments what is your favorite card out of Team Affinity 3. I'm dying to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments. Alright, well, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please drop a like, subscribe, answer the comment down below, leave a question underneath every single video. So please, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, and answer that question. Alright, well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I will see you nerds in the next one. Peace.